Having purchased and reviewed the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver, I had to find out for myself what separates this revolver with any revolver within the 856 series. That meant that I had to have something to compare the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver to. My choice was the Taurus 856 Defender. Stay tuned to find out which one because I am going to tell you all about it. My choice of revolver to compare against the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver is the Taurus 856 Defender 38 Special Plus P with tungsten Cerakote finish, a 3-inch barrel, and walnut finger groove grips from the Altamont Company. So, let's first get to the specifications, as provided by Taurus. Well, there you go. Let's move on. Take a closer look at the selected Taurus 856 Defender and make some comparisons between it and the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver. Aside from the price difference of around $200 less than the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver, this Taurus Defender has a lot of things going for it. Appearance-wise, you will see a few major differences. Rather than the ramp front sight of the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver, this Taurus 856 Defender incorporates a tritium night sight with a bright orange outline. It sure makes picking up that front sight very easy in darkened conditions, and it does not seem to wash out in bright sunlight. The rear sight remains as a simple notch cut into the frame. Considered as a combat sight, it is adequate for the purpose of this revolver. Self-defense at relatively close distances. Beyond that, it is left to the expertise of the operator. The finish is quite different from that on the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver. As compared to the Taurus 856 Executive Grade, the 856 Defender is finished with a tungsten Cerakote. According to my research, Cerakote tungsten is a dark graphite gray with silver metallic. Cerakote H-series coatings are durable, corrosion resistant, and provide unparalleled levels of hardness and adhesion. These coatings are also resistant to most solvents and chemicals. Foundation for Cerakote H series coatings is a unique ceramic technology that imparts both flexibility and excellent wear resistance to the final coating. The result is a smooth but yet pebbled looking finish that sets it apart from the hand rubbed satin finish of the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver and is quite appealing to the eye. I want to say how impressed I am with the tungsten Cerakote finish. So I will. I am impressed with the tungsten Cerakote finish. I was not expecting that deep gunmetal gray, but a lighter gray. With the trigger, hammer, ejection rod, and black hardware, coupled with the dark walnut finger groove grips, this is one great looking revolver. It should be obvious that this Taurus Defender is a double action, single action revolver. 
unlike the Taurus 856 executive grade. That is double action only. The hammer spur is substantial for cocking and decocking. There are pros and cons to double action versus single action operation. If you are looking for a self-defense weapon, the double action revolver is considered the better option because they're faster to fire and if you can get past the long trigger pull, are still incredibly accurate. I would reserve single action operation to the range and hunting, as using single action operation in a self-defense situation can have legal ramifications that you would want to avoid. You would be surprised at how fast you can operate a revolver in double action, once you are used to it. The last obvious difference between the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver and the 856 Defender is the grip style. The Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver has a target style grip that negates the use of a speed loader, whereas grip of the 856 Defender allows the use of a speed loader, and the HKS 10-A works well with this revolver, as there is plenty of clearance to use a speed loader, at least the HKS speed loader. The Safari Land speed loader will not work with the 856 Defender, at least with this model. More about speed loaders later. The grip of the 856 Defender is slimmer in girth than that found on the Taurus 856 Executive Grade Revolver, with the open back strap. But the finger grooves provide a good grip and also a hook point when drawing the revolver from a holster. Having the hand properly oriented on the grip when drawing from a holster is an important factor in self-defense situations, where speed is of the essence getting on target. Accuracy comes next. We'll see about accuracy during the range segment. The round butt of the grip also aids in concealing the Defender over the executive grade revolver with its target grip. But I did feel that another one quarter inch of grip length would better fit my hand. In your hand, they may be just right. Stated in the specifications for the 856 Defender, the ejection rod of the 856 Defender has been lengthened to ensure positive ejection of spent shells. Measuring the ejection rod of both the 856 Executive Grade and the 856 Defender shows no significant difference between the two. Expended shells, once ejected using a proper hand slap method, may hang up on the edge of the grip with the ejector at full ejection, but fall free when the ejector rod moves forward. Also as noted in the specifications for the Executive Grade, and Defender, this model, the unloaded weight of the Executive Grade is 25 ounces, whereas the unloaded weight of the 856 Defender is 24 ounces. With both the 856 Executive Grade and the 856 Defender being constructed of stainless steel, and that both revolvers are essentially the same, where did that one ounce go? The only thing that I can think of is the difference in grips. With the finger groove round butt, no backstrap grip of the Defender, having less material than the target grip of the Executive Grade. With that said, the balance and feel of the Defender is different in my hand as compared to the Executive Grade Revolver. The Defender does feel a bit lighter, at least to me. The cylinder locks up tightly when the trigger reaches the staging point or when the hammer is pulled into single action operation. There is the usual lateral free play, but no end to end free play. The cylinder to force and cone gap, otherwise known as the flash gap, is between 7 and 8 thousandths of an inch. As with the executive grade 856, the 856 Defender has chamfered chambers to assist in loading but not as chamfered as that found on the 856 Executive Grade Revolver. The cylinder, as stated, locks up solidly and is released in the same manner as the 856 Executive Grade Revolver. A forward push of the cylinder latch does its duty well. Something that I forgot to mention in the review of the 856 Executive Grade Revolver and which applies to the 856 Defender is that the cylinder lockup is via a plunger and detent system. A detent is milled into the frame, which mates with a plunger installed in the yoke. Mm -hmm. 
single action trigger pull with three pounds, 9.7 ounces with a five pull average. Double action weight is a consistent and somewhat surprising 11 and three quarter pounds as measured with my Wheeler Professional Digital Trigger Pull Gauge. The double action trigger pull, while heavy, is smooth and engaging the staging point is quite easy if you take the time to find it. After staging, there is a bit of creep until the hammer falls. This is also true in single action mode. Trigger creep is not that much, but it is noticeable. As mentioned, the hammer spur is wide, serrated, and has enough surface area for cocking or decocking the revolver. Imagine my surprise when I unboxed the 856 Defender and discovered another front sight, a plain black ramped front sight that could replace the Trijicon front sight, should I decide to do so, but won't. Additionally, there was a roll pin. For what, I asked myself. Looking at the parts diagram, I realized that it was an alignment pin for a grip. Now, why would Taurus provide a pin for a grip that I don't have? Well, I did have a grip. A rubber boot grip was hiding beneath the cardboard inset in the box. Stupid me had not even lifted the inset to even see if anything was beneath it. Should I decide to change the wooden grip panels for a rubber boot grip, which I won't, one comes with the Defender. Is Taurus on the ball or what? Okay, let's take a peek at maintenance before heading to the range. As with the 856 Executive Grade Revolver, maintenance of the 856 Defender is no different. You will probably notice that the maintenance instructions are generic in nature and includes instructions for both pistols and revolvers. I am going to let my assistant read the instructions for you since my voice is about to give out. I hope that you don't mind. The firearm may be cleaned and lubricated under normal conditions without any disassembly steps. For optimal performance, we recommend you clean and lubricate your firearm for at least every 200 rounds fired through the firearm for optimal performance. At the same time, check for any loose screws or pins. Tighten the screws and press pins back in as needed. To keep a firearm safe and in good working condition, it must be kept clean and covered with a light film of good quality gun oil to prevent corrosion. The barrel bore should be cleaned and left free of debris. Follow these steps. 1. Remove excessive firing residue from the bore and chamber using a properly fitted brass brush dipped in a gun cleaning solvent. Finish the bore cleaning process by running a dry cotton cloth patch through the bore to remove remaining residue and solvent. 2. Clean the exterior of the firearm, slide, and rails using a non-abrasive cleaning cloth. Remove dust and residue from small crevices using a small brush. 3. Lubricate the frame rails and barrel lockup points. 4. After cleaning, rub the revolver with a lightly oiled cloth. Please note that a firearm with laser should not be cleaned in a well or supersonic machine that submerges the firearm as this can damage the laser system. Well, there you have it. Use it for what it is worth to you. Now, let's get to the range, shall we?
In the specification segment, I noted that although the 856 Defender is plus P rated, that comes with a caveat. That is from Taurus. And here it is. I am shooting ArmScore 158 grain full metal jacket today, and I expect a bit of recoil and muzzle flash, but not as much as would be with 125 grain plus B ammunition that I would carry for defensive purposes. I am just taking it easy today to see what the 856 Defender and I are capable of.
As with the 856 Executive Grade Revolver, the 856 Defender can be carried in a holster of your choice. However, due to the presence of the hammer, the Defender can be carried in a shoulder holster without worrying about it falling out. My Galco Miami Classic 2 shoulder system for the Ruger SP-101 works very well for the Defender, just a bit of barrel peeking out. However, Galco does have a Miami Classic 2 shoulder system specifically for the Taurus 856, both for 2-inch and 3-inch revolvers. And note that the muzzle on some guns will protrude beyond the leather. This is by design. As with the 856 Executive Grade Revolver, I can recommend three IWB holsters that work for me. The first is the Falco A602 Timeless Pancake IWB Leather Holster with snaps that is shown, or the A112 Hawk Stable Easy On IWB Leather Holster that has metal clips and which is on order. Note that these holsters are for the Ruger SP-101 3-inch revolver. They work very well for the Taurus 856. The second holster is the Alien Gear Cloak Tuck 3.5 IWB holster. This is an excellent kybrid holster if you prefer this type over a leather holster. Note that this is for a 4-inch barreled revolver and has more stability inside the pants over a holster intended for short-barreled revolvers. Finally, there is the We The People WTP-10 underscore 1000-R holster for the Smith & Wesson K-Frame 4-inch revolver. Although for a K-Frame revolver, it houses the Taurus 856 with no problem. Since it has enough housing for a 4-inch barreled revolver, it also has more stability when inside the pants. This is my go-to holster for carrying in the cross-draw position, which has become a favorite carry position for me. As mentioned, there are plenty of holsters, IWB and OWB, for the Taurus 856 revolver. Obviously, do your research to find the right holster for your needs. That's enough. In my personal opinion, the Taurus 856 Defender would make an excellent first choice for a defensive revolver, and would make an excellent choice for those who would like to expand their current 38 Special Revolver collection. There are 19 models of the 1856 to choose from, and you might prefer the Hogue rubber finger groove grips to the hard wood grips of this model, or even G10 grips, or an 856 Toro that is optic ready. So far, I believe that the choice of the 856 Executive Grade and this model of the 856 Defender are good choices for me. If you feel that the 38 Special Plus B is a good cartridge for self or home defense, perhaps you should check out the Taurus 856 line of revolvers. And speaking of checking out, I believe that it's time for me to check out and wrap up this chapter of the Range Ronin Chronicles. More gun and gear reviews are in the mill, so stay tuned to the channel that, I am proud to say, is like no other. Until we meet again, and surely we will, Don't call me Shirley. Stay safe out there. <laughs>